From the air and the ground, firefighters attacked the fire, fighting furiously to stop the blaze that started sometime before 2 o'clock Tuesday morning at a strip mall near First Street in McKinley. But the intensity of the blaze soon had firefighters on the defensive, trying to save the two remaining businesses, the much-loved train depot restaurant. The suck, I want them to kill the fire, stop the fire. I want to happen to my restaurant. And the Thai Phuket 3 restaurant, while its owner desperately watched the losing battle. Police say this tattooed and defiant 28-year-old Jesse Canez planned to take a bus to Arizona to visit family. Instead, they say he got into a fight, stabbed his friend, and stole his buddy's car, a black 500 series BMW. Fresno police say Canez then added resisting arrest on top of it when he kicked the patrol car. Police say that it all began around 5.30 when two officers with the department's violent crime impact team were checking on a tip to find a wanted man. But before officers could even get out of their patrol car, officers say that an unknown Asian male came out of a backyard with a gun in his hand and began to open fire. At least four shots were fired hitting the windshield of the patrol car. Officers ordering anyone inside the home to come out with their hands up, a search team then moved in. A fire the city of Clovis hasn't seen in years. Got a water supply over there? Around 4.30 Friday afternoon, flames turned the service garage of Future Ford of Clovis into an inferno. This building is a very, very large structure. It's used to repair vehicles in. Uh, evidently, there was some work going on. We don't know exactly what's go uh, what they were doing at the time. We are still, our investigation team is still looking into that. As a police helicopter circled above, Fresno SWAT team members called out to 29-year-old Ulysses Montez to give himself up peacefully. Police say Montez was wanted for numerous felony charges, including robbery, kidnapping, and domestic violence. Meanwhile, across the street, Fremont Elementary students taking part in an after-school program were quickly shuffled from the back of the school that was directly across the street from the apartment to classrooms near the front comes driving down this way, he's like, you know what, I come to realize I'm Jesus Christ and I can do anything I want to. And watch this, bam, and he smashed into this guy right there, pinned him in between that truck. The African-American PG&E worker was rushed to the hospital and underwent surgery for non-life-threatening injuries. And he wasn't the only person that the crazy driver went after. When he put me in a bear hug and started beating the crap out of me, for what reason, we still don't know. And these two women are trying to help him. He runs up and he grabs one of them, man. Like a guy that big can snap a woman's neck like a pencil stick. So I ran up behind him with a hatchet. Smash, smash, smash. And that's what Tanya said saved her life. The driver is described as a big man, over six feet tall and three to 400 pounds. Kai, the homeless hitchhiker, <laughs> didn't care. That woman was in danger. He just finished uh, what looked like at the time killing somebody and if I hadn't have done that he would have killed more people. Cane Page News reporter Eric Rosales has the latest on the investigation plus what you can do to help solve the crime. Eric. Well, Ashley, let me tell you something. Some good news to report this evening. One of the lizards has just been returned to the Discovery Center. Take a look. This is Zuzu the lizard, a Savannah monitor lizard. Fresno police ended up finding the lizard just about a couple of blocks away from here. It was in a cardboard box. And uh, let me show you some of the damage that was left behind by this crook. Take a look at all this broken glass here. He ended up coming in, just shattering all these tanks. And how did he get in? Well, let me show you over here. He ended up using this brick and threw it right through the window. It ended up knocking over this mountain goat. It's a $10,000 stuffed mountain goat and broke off one of the horns. The Discovery Center officials here were devastated and they hope this guy is caught. Fox 26 News reporter Erica Cervantes was there when the pursuit ended. So Erica, how much damage did this guy do? 
Well, Ashley, this guy actually caused a lot of damage. Where I'm standing used to be a bus stop here on Belmont. You can see right here, this used to be the bus sign. This big, gigantic silver thing behind me, this was the bus shelter. And take a look at the sign that's for a restaurant that's right here. The concrete was pulled out of the ground, the poles have been dented, and up there, a piece of the restaurant sign is missing. And the doors are open, and here we go. I read an article today, the head of Activision was saying that they won't reveal right now how much they've done in pre-sales, but they said it's going way, way ahead of what Modern Warfare 2 did, and Modern Warfare 2 did 1.5 billion with a B. So does that surprise you? No, not at all. Not at all? It's, it's, as you can see from standing here, this is a pretty big situation. People take their gaming pretty serious, and Call of Duty happens to be probably the best format of all the games that's out there. This is the holy grail right here, baby. He's letting me touch it, so I appreciate it. And it's a hardened it. edition. This is it. This is the hardened edition. As KMPH News reporter Eric Rosala has investigated and uncovered, the California Highway Patrol came up with the first ever written rules regarding that maneuver. Even if you don't drive on two wheels, it's information you need to know. With gas prices the way they are and the weather beautiful, a lot more people are turning four wheels into two. But if you ride a motorcycle, there are some things that you need to know about, including lane splitting. In a story you're seeing only on KMPH Fox 26 News, reporter Erica Cervantes tells us how special needs children also play in the league. Erica, they've got to be terribly disappointed about this. Well, Monty, the kids aren't aware of what's happening yet, but their parents are so disappointed and so upset about what happened. And this is why if you take a look inside the shed that's in a park, you can see it's totally empty. The shelves are bare. The thieves took every single thing that was inside of here. And to add insult to injury, they even stole the lock that they broke to get inside. Someone knocks on your door or rings your doorbell. What's your first instinct? Well, chances are it's probably to go open the door and find out who's there. What about when it happens at two in the morning? One Madeira woman did not want to come to the door, but the thieves made their way inside anyway. We were watching a movie and we heard the first knock. We froze and just kind of looked at each other and then it happened again. We kind of got up and turned off all the lights and then they rang the doorbell. They walked away and then we heard somebody jiggling the doorknob. So at that point I told her, let's go. We, me and my youngest daughter went upstairs. Um, called the cops. We went into my dad's room. I, I woke up my dad, let him know that somebody had was breaking in. Um, he got up, that's when we realized the light switches weren't going on. Um, so he closed the bedroom door. And we locked it and he grabbed this chair and he stuck it underneath like that and pushed it until it wouldn't, it wouldn't budge anymore. We heard them coming upstairs and then we could see the flashlight through the rim of the door. And so that's when my daughter was like, let's hide in the closet because it locks from the inside. You could hear them through the walls. I was supposed to, I didn't want them to know that we were in here. Madera police showed up and arrested one teenager down the street. Tiswana De La Rosa says nights at home will never be the same. We've been awake until seven or eight o'clock in the morning just because it's terrifying. We were okay last night for the first time. Hopefully tonight we'll be okay. A car that's a mangled mess, a bus stop ripped to shreds, and a light pole knocked down. It's what's left after officers say this guy took them for a wild ride. You sound like a uh, crass. The owner of the burger restaurant says it happened so fast. All of a sudden, there was a car coming straight for his restaurant. It is really scary because we never see it happen like that. So by the time we see it, then we are scared. Officers say the driver lost control of his car when he slammed into a truck. The man driving the other car says the bad guy was going about 70 miles per hour and his daughter was in the car. That's, that's what I get scared because she started crying, you know. I, I really don't be scared that bad because I feel all right, you know. Just when I see the guy just roll over, I say, oh my God, it's nothing easy. It's something serious. After the accident, police say the guy ran and was tackled by officers in a nearby neighborhood. Just the helicopter up, up on top. Just saying, get down, get down, and we just locked the doors. I was there with my kids, and um, then we came out when we heard all the siren. Firefighters say the man was hurt in the crash and had to be taken to the hospital. The restaurant owner says he's mad about the whole thing because his customers were scared away. Very bad. <laughs> Nobody come. Now it's time very quiet. And let's see if we got any of our friends in here who want to come say hello. 
Sanjar Taromi is the chief marketing officer for Biofiltro USA and one of the leaders of this experimental project at Fresno State. The objective is to turn this filthy dairy wastewater into recyclable ag water. These sprinklers turn on and they apply the wastewater evenly to the top of the surface. It takes time before the water makes it to the worms. The first stop is the separation ponds. The solid matter stays there and the water winds up in the lagoon. It goes through this tall parabolic filter which removes sand and other particles. Then it's ready for the worms and the wood shavings. The water is moving through that thick worm casting layer and it's full of microflora, beneficial microorganisms that are further cleaning the wastewater and scrubbing it of the organic and nutrient contaminants. So to keep it simple, worm manure is the key ingredient that filters the water. So this is uh, what I like to call worm water. It's the dairy water after it's been filtered. You see it's almost like a tea or beer color now. Taromi says it takes roughly four hours after the sprinkling on top to become a finished product. The worms and the wood shavings are filtering this water 24-7. What's really incredible, everything inside this tank is valuable. Nothing goes to waste. From the worms, which can be a source of protein and food, to the castings themselves, that is the most expensive and beneficial soil amendment in California right now, uh, those are all can be sold for profit. Right now, this experimental project can filter 3,000 gallons of water a day. But Sanjar Taromi says when it comes to size, the sky's the limit. All it takes is more worms and wood shavings. At Fresno State, Rich Rodriguez, KMPH, Fox 26 News. This squadron of freedom fighters has been on patrol in the Persian Gulf for eight months. They were supposed to be home in May, but twice the Pentagon extended their stay. Loved ones could hardly contain themselves. Kendall Yurick is a daughter of a Navy pilot. Her dress says it all. The Navy has my daddy, but I have his heart. Kendall's mom, Amanda, says the separation is never easy. I think they have a hard time understanding why he's gone and why he's missing Christmas and birthdays and that kind of thing. Just after noon, the FAA teens were on the ground and the pilots were back on American soil. Let the homecoming begin. The hug line was long for Captain Jason Urich. It's been 238 days since he's seen his family. Dozens of boats took to the San Joaquin River this weekend, but these people weren't out here to have fun. They got down and dirty, ridding the river of hundreds of tires and tons of trash. The Valley's rivers are the perfect spot to cool off on a hot day, but it takes an army to clean things up once the summer's over. It's the end of the season. Uh, Skaggs Bridge has been used sometimes 1,500 to uh, 2,000 people a day will come out here and use this park all summer long. One by one, high school and college volunteers fished out nearly 250 tires for the day. No easy feat. We almost tipped our boat at least five times trying to pull one of the tires out. And then there's parts where, of the river where it just sunk our boat so much we had to like pull it along. I didn't um, imagine there could be this many tires in a river, you know? Like how did they get here? And I'm kind of disappointed that they're here in the first place. So I'm glad that we're able to get them out. Prime 7, 8, 9. I was a B-17 pilot. When you did the pre-flight, you looked at everything to make sure that there were no leaks. Bombay, we carried 8,000 pounds of bomb. They carried uh, 13 50 caliber machine guns. I don't know where it came from, 
But I always had extra ammunition in my aircraft. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.